When we think of 90s computer trivia, we probably think of Encarta's Mind Maze or Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego. But just two years after the launch of Mind Maze, Jelly Vision and Berkeley Systems released a new type of trivia game. Less edutainment, more game show, and definitely not made for the classroom. 1995 brought us You Don't Know Jack, a primetime TV game show on our computers, complete with an MC and original music. You Don't Know Jack broke the mold for trivia games and still influences game development 30 years later. I'm Alex and this is Retro Tech Dreams. You Don't Know Jack feels different than any of the trivia games from the era. It acts like a game show. You want it? You want it? Okay. You got it? No. Hang on. Okay, here we go. Okay, okay everybody, one. I need, I need to focus. Good. Let's do it. It breaks the fourth wall. Two graphics. Lose the desktop. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, go to. If you wait too long to type in your name, it makes one up for you. All right, I'm just going to give you a name. You're hereby known as Stinky. The game starts with some light instructions, players crowd around the computer keyboard to buzz in, and then we're playing. Next up, the golden age of Sarcasmovision. Okay, shouldn't be too tough, this question's gonna be worth a grand. Flight attendants, prepare for takeoff. Which of the following is not a duty you would regularly see on Howdy Duty? Howdy Duty, Jury Duty, Heidi Duty, or Double Duty? Player two, there was no Jury Duty. That's what happens during that five minute recess in a courtroom. You Don't Know Jack is hosted by an MC using pre-recorded sound clips. But the sounds rarely seem to repeat. Each intro feels different. Correct answers are explained, and many of your wrong answers are given commentary on why they're wrong. Even the prize amounts are all read differently. You get this one right, you got 2,000 bucks coming at you. Pop a right answer for this one, you got 3,000 greenbacks. A right answer will get you two Gs for this question. Just like a game show host would read them. And there are plenty of jokes and stuff throughout, just like a game show. So much original and creative writing went into this game. Not just the questions themselves, but the titles for the questions, the responses to the right answers, the responses to the wrong answers, and the dozens of ways it tells you that you got the question wrong. In a word, no. Wow, that was a bad guess. No, not that one. Wet lizard, no, they don't have that kind of a relationship. You Don't Know Jack calls itself a game where high culture and pop culture collide, and that comes down to how they ask questions. They don't just ask a trivia question like what we get in edutainment games. They put every question in the context of pop culture. So you need to know both the trivia answer and the pop culture reference to answer the question. If you only know one or the other, you're probably not going to get the question right. And the questions definitely were not written for edutainment. I played this game as a kid, and I don't think I understood any of these references. You Don't Know Jack also encourages interaction between the contestants. Screws force players to answer the question. The screws in your court player too! Hey, wasn't that a Stones album? When they get it wrong, they lose money. But there's a risk. If you screw another player and they get the answer right, you lose the money. Player three, what are you gonna do about it? Wendy's hot and juicy. Oh, player two, I know you didn't want it to work out this way, but you're the one who screwed. Once one person screws another, we often find ourselves on a path to mutually assured destruction. This mechanic is a great way to maintain your leads or gain up and pull down the winner. And it's a great game mechanic with high risk and high reward. If a player screws you, and then you come back and screw that player on the next question, the MC notices it. Player three, you've got to answer it. It's payback time. The only zoning issue Barney Miller's concerned with is whether his tie can get any wider and still be in the same precinct. It's not all multiple choice trivia questions either. Jack keeps the energy high with different question types. In this or that, one player plays while the rest sit out. Players two and three, move on out of here, cause player one's gonna take a swing at a dis or dat. This dis or dat's category name is Toys That Replace Oracles and Fortune Tellers. Okay, I'm gonna read off seven things, and for each one, I want you to tell me if it's something on a Ouija board, something in a Magic 8-Ball, or both. As each thing comes up, if it's on a Ouija board, press 1. If it's something on a Magic 8-Ball, press 2. If it's both, press 3. And press 4 if you want to skip. You get $1,000 for each right answer, and you lose $1,000 if you get it wrong or if you don't get to it at all. Alright, I'll start you off with 30 seconds on the clock. Let's dance. Concentrate and ask again. One. Goodbye. Most likely. Yes. 
In three ways, all players choose an answer from the list of three options. But the clues often have nothing to do with the group. You just picked a three-way. Okay, this is simple, but hear me out anyway. You're gonna see a three-way like this one. If you buzz in when the correct member of the three-way is lit up, it's a thousand in the bank. But look out, it'll cost you a grand every time you're wrong. But don't be misled, this question may or may not have anything to do with the three-way as a group. Okay, let's get down and dirty. The category for this three-way is... Those aren't pillows! And the comfy three-way for this one is... Planes, trains, and automobiles. Time to start seeing the goods, let's hope you're up to it. Oh yes! Oh yes! Gibberish questions and fill in the blank questions ditch multiple choice altogether. With a high dollar amount, players buzz in to fill in the blanks. But every second that passes, the dollar amount decreases down to zero. Uh oh, best butts fits mine whore! Once again, it's time for a Flitter Pitch No Scum! <laughs> All right, now here's your category for this gibberish question. Starvation and insect marital troubles. We're in round two, so this gibberish question is going to start off at $10,000. You ready to sort out some gibberish? Hope so. Tell me, what does this rhyme with? Climb no sungry, fly should be divorce. It's all yours, player two. Type in your answer. Tell you something, I am starving. Climb no sungry, flash your beat the boss. You know, one time I said this when I was at a stable, and uh, nobody thought it was funny. I wanted to see if these trivia questions could trick AI today. I tried answering my maze's questions with the ChatGPT. ChatGPT was able to get every single question right with ease. But when I answered You Don't Know Jack's questions, it struggled a bit. With this question about Roman numerals, ChatGPT's reasoning was right, but it still got it wrong and ChatGPT couldn't pass the gibberish questions at all, even with all of the hints. Even today, three decades later, You Don't Know Jack is still tricking players. The last question of each game throws players into the final round, the Jack attack. The pressure feels high, and the MC goes away for a bit, leaving nothing to cut the tension. The stakes couldn't be higher. It's extremely easy to gain a lot of money or suddenly lose it all. But what has always stood out to me about You Don't Know Jack is its atmosphere. The graphics are fun and fluid, and the audio is phenomenal. Every question number has an original song. Here are a few of my favorites. The game is packed full of original music, and the production quality feels like it's competing with 90s TV game shows. The last You Don't Know Jack from the original era came out in 2003 as Volume 6. Then Jellyvision took an 8-year hiatus before rebooting the series mostly as a council party game in 2011. In 2013, Jellyvision spun off its games division into its own company called Jackbox Games and began working on the Jackbox Party Packs. In the first Jackbox Party Pack in 2015, the company included a new You Don't Know Jack, reaching more users than ever before. When I think about trivia games that feel similar to You Don't Know Jack, one recent title comes to mind. Launched in 2017, HQ Trivia reimagined the interactive trivia experience for our mobile phones. It took the best parts of You Don't Know Jack, a sarcastic host, pop culture questions, fun animations and music, and a competitive atmosphere, all of which we saw perfectly executed by You Don't Know Jack in the 90s. HQ's live hosts interacted with players, bringing a feeling of a live game show into the players' hands. Much like You Don't Know Jack brought the trivia game genre into our living rooms. I still play Encarta's Mind Maze today for the nostalgic factor, but You Don't Know Jack only came out two years after the first Mind Maze, and it still holds up as a great game. 
You don't know Jack pushed trivia and party games forward. It wasn't the first for either, but it showed us how each element can be carefully tweaked and polished into a game that stands the test of time. You don't know Jack is still fun with friends today. Jellyvision nailed the mechanics and atmosphere, making You Don't Know Jack a game series that every gamer needs to experience. Thank you so much for watching. I played a ton of You Don't Know Jack to make this video and I hope you give it a try too. If you liked this video, please be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks again and see you in the next one.